All right, guys, so I got a great question here from a viewer on the last video that I actually put out there. It's a very good question, so I'm gonna answer this question specifically, obviously, but then I'm also gonna take this as an opportunity to kind of tie in a lot of the main points that I've learned over the past two weeks or so where I've really been diving heavily into the drop shipping to test it out, see if it works, and I'm really gonna give you a lot of the top insights that I've learned, um, you know, things that you can improve on and focus on that's gonna help you make more money in your drop shipping or reselling business, obviously, as well as, um, some key things and key lessons that I've learned over those two weeks, right? So first and foremost, I'm gonna read the question, answer it specifically, but then I'm gonna also, also take this as the opportunity to tie in a bunch of the points that I've written down right here that I was kind of just like spitballing in my mind to kind of relay to you, okay? This isn't really gonna be too formal of a video where like I've structured it, I've literally just put points down. I think these points are all things that will really, really help you out. So hopefully you can, it, hopefully they all help you, but at least get one or two nuggets of wisdom that obviously help you, you know, make more money, list better products, et cetera, okay? So this question comes from Scott. He said, he's been watching my videos for a week or two now and been uploading uh, using ZDrop to Facebook Marketplace with random Amazon products. Most, uh, mostly just to kind of gauge the traction and see what gets views and what doesn't before graduating to list perfectly, which obviously means where he's gonna be cross posting to other different marketplaces and doing this on other marketplaces, okay? He said he was gonna ask me if I would do a video on increasing views, not just methods, but maybe like a segment on managing expectations. For example, what is the minimum time you should give before listing and or before giving up on a listing, reducing its price because of low views a week. Thanks uh, for all your hard work and in time invested. Um, and you know, obviously he wants to potentially turn this into a business where he can work from home. So I think there's a lot to unpack there, but that's a really good question, Scott, or good questions in there. Um, so I definitely wanna touch on a couple of those different points. First and foremost, Z-Drop is definitely, I've played with a couple of different ones now. Z-Drop is hands down the best one that I've found out there. Um, and there's definitely some other points that I've written down in the Word doc that I'm about to go over with like 10 key pointers that, to touch on there um, that, that's really gonna help you. But a couple things stick out to me in your specific question here. You said first and foremost, uh, what's, what's the minimum time that you should obviously, you know, kind of give up on a listing? I personally, I've seen that you shouldn't give up on listings, right? There's been, you know, depending on how many products you're listing, you know, some of your products will get a lot of traction, some of them will get like no traction and others will get like next to none, right? And for a while there, I was like, should I go back? Cause I actually saw this in a Facebook group about drop shipping. Like, should I go back and delete the ones that are getting no, no traction? And then what happened the other day was I got a sale on something that had, had literally had like no views on it. And I listed like almost a week and a half ago. So I've literally seen like, don't give up on listings. You can still simply leave them there. One of the things that I thought, because I'm fairly new at this too, like I've obviously been taking it pretty seriously over the past week or two, but like I've been, I'm kind of learning on the fly as we go here too, right? Like I'm new to this, I'm relaying every single thing that I learned to you because I, I obviously resell a lot, but I don't really drop ship. So this is all new to me. I'm learning on the fly as well. One of the things that I thought that I, I think I relayed this message in one of the last tutorials that I did um, was that like you, your listings have a shelf life on Facebook Marketplace, right? I thought that originally and they still kind of do don't get me wrong right like you'll see that you can re uh, renew your listing five times i believe and then what that basically does is it puts it back up into the um like the feed or like the top of the marketplace where it's gonna get more views, right? And so I thought that like, okay, once you renew it five times, like your listing's dead if it doesn't really get any views or any traction, but it's not, it's still gonna sit there and be listed, right? And one of the little hacks that you can do around that, which I think is one of the points that I put down in the Word document that I'm about to relay to you, is you can also just go back in there a lot like you see Poshmark going in the past or in the background right now with um, like it's just automating like the sharing. One of the things on Poshmark and really in a lot of different ways, but especially on Poshmark, this works on eBay as well, is like if you edit your listing and modify something slight, right? It can be, the, it doesn't even actually need to be modified, but if you just go in to edit it and then like type around and then like delete what you typed and then pick, click post, boom, it's that, that the website, this in this specific case, Poshmark, but obviously we're talking about Facebook Marketplace, is gonna treat that as a new listing or that you've updated the listing because they're gonna see that you went in, edited it, bam, and then posted it, right? So that's another little hack and another little trick that I've seen works very, very well on Facebook Marketplace, right? So for example, there's a product that 
um, I sell on Facebook Marketplace that for a while was selling like two or three a day. It was a very low margin product, but it was selling like two to three um, you know, sales a day, like almost every morning. And one of the things that I kind of figured out that would get that sales is like, if I, and this is still anecdotal, so I'm still ga gathering data and just kind of spitballing things here, but like what I noticed is like if I would wake up to a sale or two there and then I would just let it go and I just print out the sales, you know, obviously order it from the supplier to the, to the customer and then let it go, it wouldn't really sell again like until like later on, right? But if I edited the listing and then republished it kind of, like I'm not really making any changes, I'm just like literally going in and editing it and then clicking publish again on the listing, then it would seem to get more sales right and so there's no concrete I don't have any proof of this this is just things that I'm seeing you know anecdotally in my own business so that would lead me to believe and I know this firsthand works on Poshmark okay and I also know that there's an impact with eBay right so it kind of brings your listings a little bit to the forefront it's not gonna work every single time but it definitely can work the whole reason I'm trying to say that is don't give up on your listings. Instead, go back and re you can go back and renew listings obviously, but also go back if you're not if your listings aren't getting any traction, edit and republish them and see if they get traction then see if that works, okay? So that's the first little tidbit I'd kind of say um, is, you know, don't give up on listings, just leave them there, right? Just they they could potentially get you sales. Also, you can go back, you can adjust things if you want to, don't get me wrong, right? Um, and you know, what's what what's the word I'm looking for you you can also just like relist them okay and that might make a major difference okay another little tidbit too that I've noticed is like sometimes when you're you're tra uh, transferring listings from Z drop from whatever supplier and listing them on Facebook it switches your pictures right so make sure your first image that you're seeing is actually a good image and isn't like stretched because there have been a lot of times where like I'll go back and look at my listings as a whole and not realize that like one of my pictures is horrible for the listing picture so make sure that's another little tidbit make sure that your pictures are obviously good uh, there another little part of this that you said is um, you said what like managing expectations. So yeah, I, I think that's some, definitely something I'm going to touch on at the very end of this. Cause I made a point to do that. I definitely think you should curb your expectations in the beginning. You can't just hop on and list five to 10 products a day and think you're going to be making like 10 grand a day, right? Or like 10 grand a month on this. I know there's a lot of people out there that are saying those things and they very well might be doing that. I'm not saying that they aren't. I've been in business online for a long time now. So like I know firsthand, like that's very possible in a lot of different aspects in a lot of different niches, right? But it's probably best to curb your expectations and see what's working for you before you expect to hop in your first month and start making that, okay? And then there's definitely a couple of other things here. Oh, you can reduce the price. I really wouldn't worry about that too much, um, you know, but also I would focus more so on like high margins, which is definitely another uh, point that I wanna make here, okay? So there's a couple little points here that I wanna to touch on. I hope that that answers your question. If I missed a certain point of it, um, because it was like a lot to unpack there, let me know. But I like comment down below and ask another specific question and I'll just respond to you. But I really think a lot of these points will obviously help you, but everybody else that's watching this video. First and foremost is strictly tying into your question and that's that views don't really matter, okay? And this is something that you see on eBay as well and on Mercari actually, you can't really see views on Poshmark, but like it's it's very, very similar on any marketplaces. Like views are an indicator of potential interest and potential sales of a product, right? But that's all they are, they're just an indicator. There have been items that I've listed on Facebook Marketplace where I've gotten you know hundreds of views like super fast and they never sell and they never get any interest, right? And they're still sitting there doing that. And there have been items where I've gotten like two to like 10 views, which is like next to nothing. And then eventually they sell like in a couple days. So I don't necessarily think that while views definitely are an indicator of potential sales, they're not the be all end all. I wouldn't really focus too much on views and gauge your listings and if they're gonna sell on their views. Now what you can do is you can look at your listings as a whole and see like if you list like a bunch of, you know, specific niche products and then you list like a, a bunch of different category products and then another category of products. If you look at those categories as a whole and a bunch of the one category is getting a lot more views than another, then that could be a ten potential indicator of like list more of those uh, products in that category because there's a lot more interest there, right? 
but I wouldn't really gauge it listing to listing and be like, this listing's dead because it didn't get really get a lot of listings uh, or didn't get a lot of views on it and gauge it that way. So that's my opinion, um, test it out. Like I said, I'm still learning this stuff myself, but that's what I've kind of seen, okay? Another thing is that you can, and this is actually a little tidbit that I found out yet, um, wasn't yesterday, it was like two or three days ago. And this is really, really cool. So I personally, full disclosure, haven't tested this yet. Like I have tested it to see that it, it's viable, but I haven't actually gone a step further with it. And that's that I was in a Facebook group, because I'm in a couple different Facebook groups now on Facebook dropshipping, just because I, I, it kind of interests me. I like to see what like other people are dealing with and like what's working for them. Um, and I realized that you can actually face, you can go into Facebook Marketplace, broaden out your radius to 500 miles, right? It's from like in your search. And so you can all obviously switch where you're searching from, right? So like if your location broadens out 500 miles and it doesn't reach the entirety of the US, you can go to the other coast or like a different part of the US as like your location, broaden out 500 miles and do another search. And what you can do is you can actually find the people that are successful in the, in the Facebook um, marketplace dropshipping group because you can't really have, I mean, people do have multiple Facebook accounts obviously, but most people don't, they only have one Facebook account. And so if they're listing from that Facebook account and they're in the Facebook dropshipping thing, what most people don't realize is obviously all their marketplace listings are going to be under their personal seller profile, right? So you can go into Facebook marketplace, broaden out your radius to 500 miles or, or move it around and then search for that specific person, especially if you know their location, which it obviously shows you on their Facebook, mark, uh, Facebook profile most of the time. So you can find that seller, click on that seller profile, literally see all the listings that they're selling, okay? So that I know you can do, I tested it out, right? And yesterday was Sunday, which is my off day. I also was like at a, at a party, so I really didn't do anything yesterday. I found this out like two days ago, like I think like right before I like signed off and like didn't really do anything. So I haven't touched and played around with this late, uh, like yet, but I plan on testing it out later. And you can obviously search them on Facebook Marketplace, find them and potentially, again, I haven't gone this far, potentially reverse engineer all their top listings. Or it, you know, if you really just wanna put the work in and you know that they're obviously selling well because you can see the ratings on their profile, there's been a couple people that I've seen this already. Or if they're a YouTuber and they're in the Facebook group, which obviously a lot of them are and they run their own Facebook groups, you can literally find them, see every single listing that they're listing, search all those products, figure out where their supplier is, and then reverse engineer it and list it and slightly undercut them. It, you know, that's business, right? You can do that. I'm definitely planning on testing that out later tonight. It's not my be all end all because obviously I don't focus heavily, like drop shipping, this drop shipping business is not my like my main thing. I have content, I also do reselling, but it's definitely something I'm playing around with and testing heavily out like for like an hour or two at night. Definitely plan on trying that out. That's a cool little tip, test it out. I bet you there's something there, okay? So the next little thing I wanna to touch on is that you can focus um, you know, more on listing a lot of things instead of doing heavy product research on things before listing them, okay? So just like you, I wa I've watched a lot of videos on this on YouTube just to see like what's working for other people, if they have any other insights, kind of like what I'm going over right here in this video for other, you know, that I can kind of gather and use myself. And one of the tips I was seeing a lot was like, do a lot of product research on Facebook Marketplace to find your, your products, right? And like that might be able to work, but I've found a lot more success doing it, just listing a bunch of things and testing them out, especially with Z Drop and the tip that I'm gonna go into like next, you can list them super fast, okay? So I'm talking like 30 seconds to a minute list and you can just list like, you're better off listing like a couple hundred things if you really wanted to a day than doing product research heavily and finding like one or two in my opinion, because chances are if you list a couple hundred things or even like a hundred things, which won't take you that long at all with Z Drop the way that you're doing it, is you're gonna find a couple items that sell and sell really, really well. For me, for example, I think I have, I don't know how many listings I have, let's say 500 right now, but I really don't know, it could be lower than that, probably is lower than that, but it's a couple hundred plus. There's probably, a couple products in there that have sold a couple times, but there's, I think, three of them that have sold just over and over and over again. There's one in particular that I get uh, like three sales a day on, and then the other ones I get like a sale every couple days, and they're repeat ones. So that's really what you're looking for, and that's what a lot of other YouTubers have said that do this as well, is list a bunch of things until you figure out what works for you. Obviously, list in-demand stuff. So for example, it's really nice out in the majority of the US right now, so what you wanna do is you wanna list like outdoor stuff, right? 
right? Like grills, obviously, because they're good high margins. Um, you know, patio and lawn, outdoor games, beach games, start thinking like that, swimsuits, things like that, right? You wanna list in-demand stuff, obviously, but I wouldn't waste your time doing over, like oh, spending so much time on product research. Instead, you're better off spending like a night or two really going at it, listing a couple hundred things and figuring out what's working for you, right? So that's the next, next little tidbit. The next thing that I found cool that I actually didn't know originally is in all the rest of my tutorials in the past, I was showing you like my, my inventory system, right? Where like I'd put the number at the bottom of the description and this is specifically just for Facebook Marketplace. If you're not using ZDrop, then you need to do the list. You need to like have some kind of inventory system as well. But ZDrop actually um, will store your inventory. If you go into the ZDrop, you can look at all your products and you can actually search through your products, right? And then it has the price of the product and then like on the actual supplier website, it holds that and then also can, is a clickable link to that actual supplier website. So I didn't realize that until like a few days ago where you, can, you don't need to actually keep track of your inventory if you're using ZDrop to pull it to Facebook Marketplace or to Etsy because what it will do is it will store your inventory and you can just click the link, right? So if you sell like, you know, I don't know, like Barber, Weber, Grill, whatever it is, right? Like you just search that in ZDrop when you pulled that listing over, make sure that you don't change the title too much keep the majority of it, even if you switch it a little bit. And then you can just search for that in your ZDrop uh, extension and find the link and just click it that way. So you don't need to keep track of inventory, which again, saves you a lot of time because you don't have to manage it, get the, the like it's gonna save you like 30 seconds each listing, but that 30 seconds adds up to like an hour if you're doing a lot of listings, right? So that's another little cool tidbit. The next thing is, list higher price things and list higher margin things, right? There was the, for example, the one thing that I sell um, like two or three times every single day is a lower margin thing. And I think I make like three or $4 depending on the sales tax and where it's going uh, in the country, right? That's great. I'm very, very grateful for those sales. And it hopefully obviously is gonna get me reviews on Facebook Marketplace to help rank my profile, help other buyers buy with trust, but it's not really worth my time, in my opinion, every single time to facilitate that sale for three to four dollars. So my tip that I've seen works better, there was one that I sold two today of that literally I think was a hundred and ten percent pro like hundred and ten percent margin. And it was like, I ended up making like 30 or 40 bucks on it both times I, I, I did it, right? And so that's, that's a no brainer. That's a profit margin that's worth my time doing. And so that's kind of what I'm focused more on, right? There's also like higher margin things. Like I moved into, you can't really do it on Facebook Marketplace specifically with a lot of like furniture equipment because they don't give you the shipping option with furniture. There are certain categories that you can't ship on Facebook Marketplace with. But things like that where there's expensive products, if that's you and you wanna kind of avoid competition, if it's not, that's fine. But the higher you know, and more expensive products you list, obviously the higher potential profit margin you're gonna have, not always, but you, know, you can obviously make it that way. And then obviously you're not really competing with all the newbies in there because nobody else wants to list something that's like a couple hundred bucks because they don't have a couple hundred bucks to continue to spend. So that may or may not be you, but if it is you, then obviously that's how you can differentiate yourself. And I've been testing that out recently and seeing that you can make like 90 to 100 bucks on every single listing um, if you're willing to list high-end products and you have the money or the credit to do it with, okay? So you don't need to list that high if that's not you. You can list products like I just talked about where like you're listing it for like 30 to 50 bucks and making like 30 to 50 bucks on it because there's a lot of good items like that if you find them on good suppliers. So that's another little tidbit. Focus more on higher profit margins um, and then you don't have to have as many listings because your margins will make up for that. You're not selling like, you know, 10 $5 products a day for 50 bucks. Instead, you're selling like two $25 ones. It's a lot less time invested on your part and it's the same profit. So that's my opinion on that. The next is very, very important. And this is don't use Amazon or Walmart as your suppliers. Now, the benefits of using Amazon and Walmart as your suppliers are they're super easy. They have, they're very, very reliable companies. Um, you know, they ship very, very quickly uh, there, and a number of other things, right? And they have a lot of great products to choose from. You can basically use their entire catalogs and there's a lot of great products to drop ship. But that said, the issue with that is a lot, like everybody starts with those, right? So you're competing with everybody else that's starting this and everybody else that probably already has an established business because they're probably listing from Facebook or for, from Amazon or Walmart. So you can, but you're still, you're, you're in a, 
in a large pool, or sorry, you're, yeah, you're in a small pool with a lot, uh, you, you know what I'm trying to say. You're, you're competing with a lot of people in that aspect, whereas if you list from other suppliers, you're not competing with as many people, which ties me in my next point. Obviously you can use, there's like 30 people on the Zshop site that you can use like 30 websites. So if you're not using Walmart or Amazon, that's great. But you can even take it a step further and not use any of the ones from Zdrop. Now the, the drawback of that is you won't be able to move your listings over as fast, but the benefit of that is you're competing with like next to nobody. If you find like another great supplier that's not on the Zdrop website, everybody that's drop shipping via Facebook Marketplace right now is using Zdrop to do it, okay? I am, okay? But there's definitely other suppliers that I'm testing out and moving their products over manually and you can find something with like an image downloader. I've made uh, videos on this in the past when I actually did the Poshmark one. So you can find like the image downloader. I think it's, hold up, it's um, e-commerce image downloader. Search that in the Google Chrome store and basically what that does is it pops up, you can't see it right now because um, you know I don't have it, I don't have it running on like an Amazon listing. But it pops up with a little thing. It just says download all the images on this on the actual listing. And that saves you so much time because you don't have to literally right click and download or take a snapshot of it and then save it, right? So it saves you a lot of time. You can just download all the images, copy the title, copy the description, move it over very, very quickly. It's not gonna be as fast as ZDrop, but it's gonna be still pretty fast. And on top of that, you're competing with next to nobody with that supplier, okay? So the best tip that I could give you is A, don't use Amazon or Walmart, but also you could even take it a step further and not use any of the suppliers on the Zdrop site and just use something else entirely in a different supplier that nobody's using. And then nobody else will be able to compete with you on those products because nobody else is using that supplier. That's probably the best tip that I could give you. Um, and then you start listing like 100 products from that supplier, chances are you'll find a lot of success doing it, okay? Now, the next tip that I wanted to touch on is think of this as a long-term game and every listing that you create adds value you know, and potential sales to your business over time, right? So it ties back into the point of like, none of your listings are really actually dead. And I thought that in the beginning that they were, but every single listing that you list, and I've been looking at this on Poshmark and seeing that it's true because I don't just drop ship on, on Facebook Marketplace. I've been testing this out on a number of platforms. Every single listing is a potential sale over time, right? So the more listings that you have, obviously this doesn't correlate specifically, but the more listings that you have potentially, the more potential sales that you'll make. This is true in reselling, it's also true in drop shipping. So look at it as a long-term game. The more listings that are quality, obviously, that you add to your store, the more potential sales that you get over time. Because honestly, there's a lot of people on YouTube creating videos right now that are like, how to make $100 a day drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace, or how I made $10,000 drop shipping my first you know, month on Facebook Marketplace. I'm not saying that they're lying. They very well could be doing that, but, but it is important to curb your expectations, and I totally get as like somebody that creates YouTube videos, I've far, like I've gone way past this where like I genuinely don't care like if the views get, none of my videos get much views anyway. Um, it's just kind of like a fun thing for me and also I relate it to you and also like this is a good target market for my resale university course which is I help you eventually if I help you enough you'll potentially go through and buy the course which um, first link in the description if you want to check out a video of what it is, how it can help you and how you can get a free dollar, not a free, a dollar trial for it. Um, but so the whole thing there is like I get why they make those videos because and title them that way, like I'm no saint either. I've done that in the past and I probably still will continue to title videos like that if I come up with a decent title. But like a lot of it's hype. They probably, you know, some of them probably are doing that. Some of them probably aren't doing that. Curb your expectations. Think of it more as like a long-term business and don't go into it. If you go into it with the mindset of like, I need to make $10,000 this month or I need to make $10,000 next month drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace, you're gonna get bummed out because you're not gonna see those results right away and it's gonna discourage you. Instead, set a realistic goal. Maybe I wanna make five sales a day uh, you know, consistently over my first month or I wanna make $1,000 from this profit my first month. Those are obtainable goals that you can hit and then that will inspire you once you hit them to see like, okay, like I made 1,000, like how can I actually scale this now? Maybe I add more listings to my store. Maybe I add more, you know, I find a better supplier. Maybe I branch out to other marketplaces, right? So look at it more long-term. Don't look at it as like a some easy way to get cash right now, okay? And the next thing that I wanted to touch on and finally is specific to your question, but also specific to everybody is like, I've been probably getting like five sales a day now. And one of the things that, ish, I, I haven't actually added it up because I, I have like a long spreadsheet and this ties directly into my point is like, 
I don't, I don't draw any specific conclusions yet because it's too early. It's only been like two weeks really that I've really been going at this, maybe a couple weeks more than that, like where I was testing it out with like a listing here and there. But it's only been like a week or two realistically that I've really been kind of testing this out in depth. And so I don't have enough data yet, right? So the key lesson here is don't pivot too fast, don't judge your listings too fast, don't judge your products, don't judge the category that you're listing in too fast and look at it more as a long-term game, right? That way, as you accumulate more data and you do it like over a month or two, you'll have more data, you'll know what works for you and you'll be able to make better, more informed decisions. This is true in any online business, but obviously drop shipping. A perfect metaphor and an example of this is like when I run advertising, I'm doing it on YouTube right now, you might've even seen some of them if, as somebody that watches this channel. I used to panic when I didn't like in the beginning, like I used to sell my course for like 500 bucks with the discount, right? It was 995, but then discounted to 500 bucks. And if I didn't make that 500 bucks, like if I ran ads that were like 500 bucks and I didn't make a sale, I was like, oh my God, and shut the ad off, right? But now I'm seeing that like, if you give it more time, more data, it optimizes better and you start to get better results over the long term, and your cost per customer, your cost per lead, all that stuff goes down, right? Your cost per click your cost per impression. And so it's the same thing with Facebook Marketplace, it's the same thing with drop shipping or any of these types of things, right? Do it more, accumulate more data, I'm not saying do it for a year, but don't just do it for like a week, look at your listings and think that they're, you know, you're not successful or you're doing something wrong. Do more of it, accumulate more data, then draw better conclusions with more data, you'll see more consistencies. So those, this wasn't like an organized video. This is just like stuff that I'm spitballing off the top of my head that I thought could really you know, help you guys and like insights and, and mistakes that I've made over the first couple weeks doing this myself. I really hope that it helps. Give it a thumbs up if you appreciate the value in this video. Drop a question down below if you have a specific question that you'd like me to answer and maybe I'll turn it into a video like this and I'll see you in the next one.